Hello, I'm very excited to share an, a new open source project for visualizing LiDAR point cloud in the browser. And uh, the link to the GitHub repo is in the video description below. Uh, once you go to the repo, uh, you can check out the readme here. So there are a lot of new features. It allows you to visualize point cloud in the browser just with a couple of clicks without having to write any LiDAR code. You can also do all kind of filtering, change uh, the styling, something like that. So I would highly recommend you just click, go to the uh, demo section and then click this live demo and you can open it in the browser here. So this is basically um, a web app powered by the map library uh, GL LiDAR plugin. So it's an NPM package. That means you can use Node.js to run this one to install the dependencies. I will show you the step how to utilize that, how to build it locally. But for now, let's try out this demo. So once it's open, you can check out these two examples here, either using the uh, TypeScript or you can also use uh, React. But if you're new to this, just click the viewer, allows you to use the sample data set. So here you can paste any link to uh, LiDAR Play Cloud uh, on the web, or you can just try out some of the sample data set here for the first one. So the sample data set uh, has, uh, did the, I, I recommend the first one because it also has RGB. So the data set is from uh, Hubo uh, by Howard Ballard. Uh, thanks to him for uh, producing those nice data set. And so once it's open, take a look, right? This is where you can visualize the point cloud. You can press control on your keyboard and then drag your mouse to uh, rotate uh, the point cloud. And on the right, you will see this panel here. So this one allows you to basically change the visualization of the data. It also allows you to open the data on your computer or you can paste the URL directly from here. By default, it's using the elevation. So you will see this is just a, a graduated uh, color ramp. So the blue color represents low elevation and the yellow color represents a high elevation. So you can certainly see from here. By default, it's using the uh, percentile to basically clip out the outlier. If you turn this one off, you will see the imagery. Uh, the visualization looks a little bit dark because there are some very high elevation values and also there are some very low. And so if you remove the percentile, basically uh, the uh, extreme low values and also extreme high values, then your visualization looks uh, so much better. You can also look at the change the point sizing here. Um, by the way, so this is a pretty decent size point cloud data set. Look at the bottom here, it has over 10 million points. So it's a huge data set. This will not work if you're using traditional mapping libraries because it's just going to crush your browser. If you zoom in, you will see basically it's just a bunch of points. And this this data set is a copy. copy uh, COPC represents uh, cloud optimized point cloud. Um, that means that you can do the streaming. So right now we are not uh, basically downloading the entire data set is pulling the data on demand based on your viewpoint. So it's using HTTP range request to get the data. And you can change the uh, point size. If you want to make it look more smooth, you make it a large uh, point size. And everything we are doing here is basically instant. So it's changing the visualization directly in the browser. So you can see the effects in here. By default, I can use the point size maybe just two. Uh, it looks pretty decent. So, and we zoom out, it's pretty smooth uh, because it's just too many points. 10 million points in a small area is a lot. Also, you can change the opacity. So here I can visualize here, you can change the opacity um, to zero or one. Also, you can change the, um, let me show you here. You can do the enable point picking. So if you uh, check this box and then have your mouse to the map, you will see that you actually can basically highlight the uh, attributes for each point. You might not see it, but if you zoom in, you will see the points being highlighted in uh, blue color. So if you see it slowly here, oops, you might need to, it's not very clear. So let me change the point size a little bit larger. Oh, it's not highlighted. Yeah, you can see the, can you see the blue, uh, the yellow, yellow dots? All right, so it's moving around. So this is certainly, it, it works. And you can zoom out here, there, and then turn this one off. So let me change the point size to back to two. So this is to do the uh, picking. You can also do the elevation filter. Elevation filter means uh, because it's a range of elevation values. So if you want to see a particular value range, you can change it. So for example, I'm going to maybe slide from the left to the right. 
and it's going to remove all the low values right and similarly you can do it from the right to the left to remove the high values first and this is very cool sometimes if you want to see for example uh, which features share similar elevation this is something that you can do easily and it's very very powerful so let me turn this one off uh, the next one is the g offset g offset means um how uh, how much you want to uh subtract from the elevation values because all the light are point cloud uh, the elevation basically is the absolute elevation and so if basically above the sea level and it's not above the ground it's not the relatively, relatively high and if you don't subtract them then it's going to be basically just uh it render because the map uh render based on the relative height not on absolute height so here you see by default it's going to calculate it based on your data um this one is negative 124 that means we are minus the value like by 124 so to bring it down otherwise it will be kind of floating above so if you change this one here for example back to maybe zero or something like that you will see it's basically rendered above the ground because all the points is the absolute uh, um, um the, the original elevation is the um elevation above the sea level so that's why it looks like that and you uh you don't have to worry about it it's going to be automatic so you can move it up and down depends on your uh requirement so by default i think for example here uh 127 is somewhere there but you can change customize it so it is attached to the map uh, base map right now if you uh press control and then drag the map you don't really see the gap but you might need to zoom in uh to that inside here uh, so this is where you can see in detail um so if the map is kind of moving out of the uh, viewport, you can click the zoom button to reorient this one back to the uh, viewport here. As you can see, it's very powerful, but um, you have more functionalities. This one just shows you the elevation. You can change it to the intensity because LiDAR Point Cloud, uh, most of those pretty much all has the intensity. And this is just a gray scale imagery. You can see the um brighter color rep represented high refractance uh, darker color means it's uh, low refractance and you can see some of those for example water trees uh and trees mostly because this is uh if the lidar is um for example near infrared lidar some of those here you will see uh depending on the features it's going to be very different so in general building something like that you're going to have high refractance water and um, vegetation usually have relatively low uh, refractance uh, from here so that's why some of the trees looks pretty dark uh, in this case besides the intensity you can also change by classification and because some of the lidar uh, sensor can already automatically um, uh, recognize the uh, the type and so you can turn this one on for here you can clearly see the blue color represents water and you have trees you have ground you have some building infrastructure something like that so it gives you all the attributes, all the classes for this particular uh, LiDAR per cloud. You can turn off them off uh, directly. You can turn them back on, uh, but you can also make turn on individual one. For example, just turn on the ground. Right? So if you just want to create, they say, um, BIOS DM, then you might just want to use the, um, the ground point cloud, right? And then you have high elevation um, buildings. So if your focus is on a particular class, then you will just extract some of those classes and water, right? Different classes. There are some other classes in here. Uh, those are basically, it's not classified. So it exists in the data set. Uh, so let me turn back all of them. So this is how you can view the classes. The last one is the RGB. So this one is the most interesting one because it resembles uh, the kind of like remote sensing imagery, natural color, and looks pretty real, right? So if you zoom out, it, it might seem this is just um, uh, air imagery, but it is not. If you zoom in, you will see the point here. Right? It's just a bunch of points. The reason for that, why we can use the RGB, because the if you enable the picking, have your mouse, you will see the attribute there. They have the RGB value, right? Red, green, and blue. So when you are doing the visualization, you can grab the value so they can populate uh basically use that to do the bank combination and then give you the value so it's super super cool and this is all 3d right so if you zoom in here and then uh tilt it horizontally you will be able to see the the basically the tree height you can change the point size to a little bit smaller 
right? If it's just one, it will be a little bit um, sparse. But this is how you can easily visualize the point cloud. As I mentioned, this what this data set is over 10 million points, and we can visualize them without any problem uh, directly uh, inside here. And this is pretty much it. Um, so you can also open data set on your local computer. So let me remove this one right now, right? And then just return to this. I can click this button. You can paste the URL uh, or you can open local computer. So I have some sample data set here on my local computer and I can navigate to it. For example, I can open um, the other data set, for example, Madison, uh, Wisconsin, and you can, oops, okay. It might take a second or two, but this one has 4 million points data set. Uh, similarly, you can see in here, pretty cool. And it's very, very fast. Um, although it might have a second or two seconds uh, lag when you initially open it, but after that, it's also streaming the data from the memory. Uh, it's pretty powerful. This is 4 million, so let me open another one. So I remove it. Uh, you can also actually open multiple data set. You don't have to remove them, but just to save some um, memory, I, I remove them because I'm recording uh, it's using a lot of GPU. The last one I show you is even much larger. So this one has 27 million points. It's a huge data set, huge number of points. And this one you can certainly see a lot of outliers, right? So those might be um, some noise. It might be uh, flying birds or something like that when the light that was being kept. So it might be airplane, it might be something in the sky, but also you might see something at the bottom here. Uh, so very some low value i don't know why so those are things you might want to filter out uh, if you don't right so we use the original um visualization so if you uh, don't check this uh, where is it uh it was by default is using the two uh the percentile okay let me you might need to turn this one more okay so if i turn this one off you will see it's pretty dark right because there are some outlier extreme values so you always want to use this two percentile to uh, cut out the outliers from the data so that you can get a much better visualization. So this is just the um, uh, elevation right now. And it's, it's a little bit laggy, but it's not too bad. Let me change to, for example, intensity. Uh, similarly in here, you can see the intensity. You can see the classification, uh, pretty nice. So this classification is different from the, uh, um, the first data set that I showed you, right? It has low, high, a medium elevation buildings like I can turn the building off if you want to uh, so allows you to easily see individual uh, features this one doesn't have the RGB so if you turn this one on it will just switch to the elevation because not all the data set has the RGB attribute uh, information and yeah so this is what I want to show you uh, as you can see it's pretty easy to use you are welcome to just go to the uh, URL and then open the viewer here you can you this is all static so it doesn't have a server so it's running serverless uh, just on github pages and it's pretty powerful there's also a basic example if you click this one it will take you and then just preload the um the data set uh, as well and in, by initially you see the color is not changed because it's retrieving the data so depending on internet speed it might take a couple seconds to uh, render the data also there's um layer control here so this is something i created it's another package that i will introduce in the future but i just want to quickly show you it also allows you to change the opacity allow you to turn on the layer and you can also change all kind of settings so it's all the new stuff that's coming uh, very soon in another video and besides using just the web it also works in jupyter notebook so this is the most powerful thing is that whatever i build i'm building right now i can bring it into uh, Jupyter Notebook. So I can show you quickly, for example, I have a sample. Um, I would, I don't have time to get into the detail how to use the Jupyter Notebook uh, for this uh, package yet, but I can show you uh, to just to show you that it actually works, right? So I have this LiDAR layer sample notebook in here. So it's using another package called Animat TS. Uh, I will show that in another video in the future, but uh, it's very simple to the leaf map and the map library library that I created, right? You can create a map and then I can just add this LiDAR control. Uh, very very easy why well, anyone can create a map so it actually works within the Jupyter Noble environment as you can see here I can load the map and then from here I can open a data set from my computer right so I can open this um, sample data set and you can see it's loaded instantly it, it's like four million points uh, a couple million points without any problem and so I can change to RGB uh, just to show you it, it works in a notebook environment I can click this 
So everything uh, works the same way as it is in the in the browser in the um, uh, TypeScript um, environment. All right, so this is how uh, it works. Next, let me quickly show you how to set it up if you want to try it on a computer. So there are two ways. Uh, if you are familiar with um, TypeScript or JavaScript, you can use npm. You will need to install Node.js. So if you don't know that, just type Node.js and then go to the web page, download this one, install on your computer. After that, you will have this npm command, no uh, package management command. Then you can install this one and then you can create some um, uh, web page to use this TypeScript or you can use React. I'm still learning. I, I, I just started using this maybe um, a week. So I'm still new to TypeScript, but if you just follow example and then use some AI to help you, it should be pretty straightforward. It's not very difficult. And, or if you want the entire, I mean, if you want to make it easy, you can clean the rep, uh, clone the repository, click this button, and then just clone to your computer. So I'm going to open the terminal here, uh, git clone. Here's the URL, hit enter, all right? So once you have this, uh, have that on your local computer, then you can use npm to install the dependencies. Just type npm i or install. It's gonna install all the um, npm packages. And after that, type npm run build to build uh, the TypeScript and then convert them to uh, JavaScript. And then the last step is npm run dev is to open this one in the browser. So it's going to open the local uh, development uh, server on your computer. And this is exactly the same, like what I showed you initially. So the, the, the one that I showed you earlier is deployed on Giga Pages. It's serverless, it's just a simple HTML. This one right now is running on my local host. And it's the same example. So if I click, uh, you'll be able to open this one on your computer and then it's gonna preload the data set, exactly the same. So we, you're welcome to adapt this one and then to deploy it on your own computer using your own data set. It's all open source, it's free. So uh, you don't have to pay anybody anything. Um, the other way is you can use the uh, Docker. So if you uh, use Docker, you can also use here uh, just to pull this one and then to run the Docker. So let me quickly show you, I can open the terminal and then just paste the command. You need to install a uh, Docker on your computer and then pull the, um, Docker image. After that, you can run the Docker uh, image. And if you scroll up, it will show you the URL here, localhost. So press control and then click. It will open the web page and you will see they're exactly the same. So uh, whichever you prefer, you will be able to run this one easily using your uh, local computer. And it does run much faster. If you have a GPU, it renders much faster because you're using Tech Geo uh, web GPU. So this is how you can easily render. I have a lot more features to come. So this one will be integrated into the AnyMap uh, TypeScript package that allows you to use that in the noble environment. So if you are not a JavaScript or TypeScript user, you can just use a notebook and then just similar command to create a map, add the layer control or something like that. And uh, under the hood, it use some of these dependencies, uh, copy and also uh, uh, maplibre and also you can automatically do the um, change from the coordinate system. So if this, it basically hang, you handle that automatically, you can do the conversion. So it's very powerful. Uh, check it out. If you um, run into any issues, feel free to submit a, a, a report, bug report, or we just bookmark this one so more people can discover the project. And so uh, the more people use it, um, the more features, the more feedback we have, it's going to get so much better. So I'm hoping this one will be um, the new a uh, package that everyone will be using to visualize LiDAR point cloud, either it's in the browser or in the Jupyter Noble, and you can also use it in a commercial environment. Um, and I have a lot more to come. Um, if you, let me see if I can. Anyway, I will show you in the next one. Um, this is enough for today, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.